Today's episode features a very special guest, Damian Pacheco, one of our amazing instructors within our public administration master's degree program. Take a listen to how Damian discusses what it's like working in the Department of Education and the Department of Youth and Community Development as a person with a master's degree in public administration himself. Damian also sheds light on various different roles you can get into with a master's degree in public administration. Talk about some of the MPA opportunities that are within the DOE and some of those possibilities. So, and, and not so, just the DOE. I used to work at um, at DYCD as well. So I feel like a lot of um, there there are a ton of management and leadership opportunities within the Department of Youth and Community De- Development within the Department of Education that that sometimes folks just don't know about. I think sometimes folks get trapped into that world of like I need to direct to have that direct service. Like I need to com- work with another human body director. There's so many behind the scenes opportunities that, that folks can have with an MPA. Sometimes people just, you know, don't, either don't know about or just haven't heard about. I, no, absolutely. Like I never, like, I, I'm not a teacher. I'm not, I, I'm not, my master's is in public administration. It's not. Um, so when, when people think, when people find out that I'm in the department of education, they automatically assume like, okay, you're a teacher, you're some sort of admin. Um, but that's that's not the case. As a matter of fact, the other day I was in one of one of my offices in in Washington Heights, and um, someone says, "Hey, uh, Pacheco," and you know, but with masks on, you know, you can't tell like who's who. And then I'm like, "Yeah, she." And, and she said, um, "It was this young woman who said, I was in cohort ten, the MPA program cohort ten at Alfred, but I wasn't in your class. I was across the hall from you." But I, but I graduated and then, you know, here I am now. And she's like budgeting finance operations um, at the DOE. When you do have an MPA, what are some uh, roles you think that people can go into? A lot of my colleagues that have MPAs, they're in operations, logistics, professional development, grants, finance. Like grants is a big one, big one, big one that um, a lot of MPA students kind of move into. There's various leadership roles. There's so many departments that aren't necessarily, you know, related to pedagogy, like that direct link. There's just so many behind the scenes, director roles, community work, family work. It it's really, it's really endless. I think, I think what what folks need to do though is when they're looking at an MPA and they're looking at working for the city, they also need to to see what civil service exams are out there, because that that connection with a civil service exam and a title will give you more opportunities not just to work at the department of education but to work at you know various city agencies if you take an an administrative or an uh, educational officer test or a staff analyst test or a contract specialist test that's on like the dcas website you'll start getting phone calls to attend hiring fairs from different city agencies and with your mpa you can become a contract specialist for the Department of Youth and Community Development or HRA, or you can work at ACS. There's so many of our students that come through our program. I want to say like 60% of our students work at ACS, at least in the classes that I've had. It's been like ACS, HRA, housing development, and then you get your community-based organization folks um, who also look forward to uh, getting that MPA because with an MPA and a, and a CBO, Again, you could get into management, leadership roles, grants, finance, like the possibilities are just like, I, I look at that MPA as that, that degree that covers so many, so many aspects of, of work in the public sector. So I, I started my career working at community-based organizations and my programs were funded mainly through the Department of Youth and Community Development. Um, and then making connections and, you know, getting your MPA and just meeting people. Um, I started working at the Department of Youth and Community Development as a program manager. So I assisted the, like the once community-based organizations that I used to work for, I then um, assisted them with, you know, with their program development and their grants and the finance aspect of their grants. Um, and it was a great job, you know, and as youth development um, really began to grow, um, so did programs, you know, they went from uh, your OS, your out of school time programs and, and Beacon programs and now they're like Sonic, Compass, Beacon, you know, the, the names have changed, but they've become so robust and, and it's really amazing the things that they do for, for our young folks. 
Um, but working at DYCD was an amazing opportunity and you, you get to see so many different sides of the work, right? Like you have your contract folks, you have your, um, your budgeting folks, you have your grants, your grants folks, you have your program folks. Um, and, you know, and everyone has like an, and everyone has an MPA, you know, so, um, and, and I had, and I had colleagues that worked on the program side that, that um, transitioned to the finance side who then transitioned to like grants and then um, from OST to, well, now it's something else, but at that time it was OST. So from this department to like summer youth employment to the Beacon programs to Cornerstone programs. Um, so it was, it was really great. The development of, of staff was very, um, it was visible and it really motivated you to kind of keep pushing and keep pushing. What are two tips that you would give somebody that's in the MPA program on getting a job after the program? Absolutely. So I tell this to people all the time. So the biggest part of the work for me is, yeah, like we, we go through our instruction and we go through, you know, this is what it is and, you know, establishing yourself as a leader in your organization. But the, the networking and the, and the relationships that you're building within your cohort can definitely help you with job placement after, and even just staying in contact with your professors, staying in contact with your classmates. And then really, depending on what you see yourself doing or where, what, you know, like your trajectory, um, getting involved in, you know, organizations that, that, that are kind of aligned to what you want to do. Um, but back to the networking with 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 um, your classmates, we've, you know, I I know classmates that have after class have gone to work with other classmates. Like, okay, cool. Um, hey, look, there's this job at this hospital that I'm working at. Do you want to do an interview? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, there's this job at, you know, ACS. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Let's you know, um, let's have these conversations. Um, so you know, I, I feel like our our biggest resource in a lot of the things that we do are people and connecting to people is, is definitely probably like the biggest, um, the biggest asset when you're looking for a job outside of, outside of Alfred, once you leave Alfred. I started yeah. working with Alfred because of um, Shahira Payano, who's a professor at Alfred. And she actually got me my job at UYCD and the do like, just like these these networks that you develop and these relationships that that, that you cultivate throughout the years, um, you know, I always tell I always tell folks like you never know who your next boss is going to be, and you never know who's sitting next to you, and the yes. influence that they might impact that may that they may have like on your career or just your life in general. Um, so always keep relationships you know healthy and, and happy, and um, and you never know. You never know. As an instructor, I just wanted to know your take on how is it being an instructor and professor during this time during COVID? You no, know, so teaching in person was was awesome, right? Like there's nothing like that face to face. Like you can you can see people, you can gauge their reaction, you know, they can't turn their screens off on you if they're in front of you, right? Um and I and I feel like because everyone, you know, it's a Saturday program that begins at eight in the morning, goes to four in the afternoon. The people that show up want to be there, right? So it's not like they're there to to waste their time, waste their money, waste your time. So it was amazing being in person. You know, I would bring my class coffee and bagels, and we would we would talk, and we would get to know each other, um, and kind of grow with the work. Like I was like, you guys are going to learn from each other. So it was really easy for them to learn from each other because they had nowhere else to go, right? Um, we would get chart paper, chart things, we would do walks, and we would data walks and, and whatnot. Um, so then transitioning to, to virtual, it took, it took some getting used to, but I feel like everyone adapted pretty well. You know, there's things that you can do virtually that you can't do in person, right? It's like I can pop up Canvas or my slides and we can do mini breakout rooms and then switch the rooms and the transitions could flow uh, smoother. Um, things can happen quicker because it's that zoom so you know i can say all right class you know we have this assignment i'm going to pull up these resources for you which you could kind of still do when you're in person you know but but you're you're relying on the technology from the class that you're in um so 
you know, it's different, but I feel like our students, you know, just given where they're at in their careers, they've adapted to so much before that this adapting to this was kind of seamless um, for them. And, uh, you know, and I, and I know folks enjoy the fact that once they turn off the Zoom, like they're home, right? There's no commuting home from, from wherever, wherever their, their class is. Um, but now I'm teaching a course that started in Zoom, it's going back in person. So I can't, I kind of can't wait to, to, to get back in, in person with folks. What kind of other fields do you think people can go into? I know that we, education is one. Oh, 100%. Uh, I mean, there's so many, I, like just to kind of think of like the students that we've had and, and what they do. Um, so my, my original, to, like my career started in youth development. So I always worked, like I started in after school programs, developing programs, right? Um, like to actually, even before that, I used to do case management for families with HIV and AIDS in the Bronx. That was like my first, you know, job outside of undergrad while I was getting my MPA. And I got my MPA because my directors at the time, they all had their MPAs. Um, so it was, it was that type of work, you know, and then thinking back, thinking back to our last class, our students were in such a, we had students working in suicide prevention. We had students working with, um, newly released, um, incarcerated youth, um, in, in group home settings. We've had folks working in, um, in facilities uh, for for youth with disabilities and adults with disabilities. We had folks in the Department for the Aging. Um, like I said before, ACS was a big one, uh, is a big one. Um, there's, just, there's just so many things that you can apply that MPA to. Um, you know, rehab programs and um, how you said hospitals, social services, it's just, the possibilities are just endless. You know, when I was when I was going to, so I got my MPA at Baruch, like, what year are we in? Like 15 years ago, and they used to tell us that, oh, you guys are the you guys are the ones not going into business. Okay, cool. You guys are doing, you know, you they 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 said something like, oh, like you're the fly on the hippo's back. Like you're here to save the world. And I think with like an MPA, you can really like save the world. You know, you can do like I said, you can just do so much. And then like, it doesn't have to stop at your MPA. Like you can go back to school and get your degree in, or another degree in whatever. Teaching, teaching for sight and with Alfred has been such a great experience. Um, and I feel like I learned so much from the students themselves um, because they, they're, we're, in, we're in similar fields. You know, it's not like we're, I'm here and they're in outer space or, you know, it's been such a great, great learning experience for me and I, and I hope for the students um, and it's and it's fun you know because like I said earlier like no one no one wakes up one day and says I want to spend the next you know two years on a Saturday from eight to four just you know in class um, but they're doing it and you know we, we make it as engaging as possible. Um, I just love that the, the students are actually learning from somebody that has, you know, the degree that they're trying to obtain. I'm, you know, it's great that they are learning from people that are actually in the work, that do the work, you know. It's not like a, a science teacher that usually teaches math or something, yeah. you know, like you're actually Absolutely. in the field. So you can give them personal experiences and stuff like that. And that's really the best teacher that, as well. And that's, and that's, you know, like I said, we go through our books and we go through, you know, our, our lesson plans and we go through everything that we're supposed to, but I feel like they get so much more out of the conversations that we have and that they have with each other. Um, as long as the conversations are guided, right? Cause like, you don't want it to turn into something that's just not what it's supposed to be. Um, and but like I said, you know, our, our students, they're, they're at a point in their careers where you give them one question and then they're like, all right, cool. And like, you see like the wheels turning and they have these, these dialogues and we have these turn and talks and we have this group work and they're, they're great. They're great. And then they leave and sometimes it's like three thirty, four o'clock four, and they're like, oh man, class is over. I'm like, yeah, class. They're like, no, 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 no. I'm like, yeah, no, I gotta go home too. Yeah. <laughs> Facts, exactly. <laughs> but thank you once again. All right. And all the best. Oh, email, text. I got it. For sure. Be good and all the best. For more information on our podcast, be sure to follow our social media platforms on Instagram at Site Online, Facebook, Site Online, and Twitter, Site Online. That's C I T E 
O-N-L-I-N-E. And you can follow us on LinkedIn as well. Till next time.